Hello and welcome to High School Soccer on WOSN. Alongside Nate Garlock, I'm Evan Skilleter, and it's our second game of tonight's opening night of high school soccer. We call it Football Friday here in Ohio, and it's boys action now, Alan East hosting the Kenton Wildcats. So excited to be with you, Nate. Our uh, second of two games, Alan East winning the first one against Kenton, and now the boys turn to play some soccer. Yeah, and it's actually kind of the exact opposite of what we saw, you know, in that first game. Alan East had the experience. Um, Kenton was trying to, had a lot of new faces, trying to figure some things out. And now as we flip over to the boys' side, this is a Kenton team finished second in the very tough WBL last year against an Alan East team that has a lot of new faces, including their head coach. Yeah, absolutely. Russell Bender doing the Coaching for Allen East in his first year, they start with Cole Barton, Jake Cox, Xerxes Eyerly, along with Jensen Glorioso, Mitchell Hawk, Logan Helser, Garrett Jennings, Zane Newland, Reese Parker, Emilio Reddig, Manny Reddig, and Ison Schaefer. On the other side, for Kenton, coached by longtime head coach Jamie Bartlett, they start with MJ Colson Harper in goal. Joel Bowman, Ethan Yoder, Hunter Taylor, Marlon Lopez, Cam Jessianowski, Micah Bowman, Gus Wingfield, Austin Chen, Chris Villa, and Adam Kaufman. Kenton wearing the white uniforms with the red trim. Alan East in those blue uniforms with black trim. As we are underway, tonight's scoreboard sponsored by Kenton Moose. You can see early going, Kenton doing exactly what you would expect an experienced team to do, putting a lot of pressure on this young Mustang team. Yeah, experienced indeed, but they did lose a lot of production from last year. In fact, about four of their top scorers are not, or have graduated, excuse me, and they'll rely heavily on senior captain Ethan Yoder. He wears number four. Last year scored five goals, six assists, and that's the most goals for any returner. This year for Kenton, a team that you said finished 14-4-1 in a really tough WBL. And Alan East really trying to bring this program along 2-12-2 a season ago. But a team that with every year gets a little more experience. And so it'll certainly be interesting. Their leading scorers last year returning are Garrett Jennings and Eisen Schaefer, both with three goals and an assist last season. Newland kicks this out to the right side. It's Jensen Glorioso that grabbed it first, and now running after it is Emilio Reddig. That ball goes out of play off of Kenton, so a goal kick coming up for the Mustangs. Allen East in the Northwest Conference. Kenton in the Western Buckeye League, and Nate, we talked in the first game about just how skilled and, and how great Northwest Ohio soccer is, the Northwest Conference, the WBL, two really good conferences when it comes to soccer, especially. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Western Buckeye League, you know, has the defending state champion, Shawnee Indians in it. You know, but this Kent team, one of the things that, you know, is, is impressive about them and you have a lot of respect for, they don't shy away from that challenge. You know, everybody knows Shawnee and the storied program that they have built, especially over the last four years. You know, haven't lost a WBL game in, in that time. You know, but Kenton last year having a tremendous season, one of the best that they've had, and they had a, a tremendous group. And last year, and I don't know if a lot of people know this story or not about the Wildcats, but come tournament draw time, you know, as, as they're drawing and everybody gets an opportunity to kind of put themselves on the line, Kenton put themselves on the line to have a collision with Shawnee, knowing that no matter what happened, they were going to have to go through them, and they welcomed that challenge. And even though it didn't go in their favor and Shawnee goes on to win the state championship, that's the makeup of this team. So even though they've lost a lot and they're kind of remaking and reshaping their team this year, they are going to still be in that image. They don't shy away from challenges. You're seeing that a little bit here in the early going with the way that they play. They play fast. They play aggressive. A lot of pressure. And, and they make you make mistakes. And that's what they like to do. No question at all. Right now, it's been mostly Kenton with the ball. Working the ball into the final third. Here they go as they send it down the right side looking for Chris Villa. But out comes the goalkeeper, Zane Newland. Newland doing a nice job that time. Saw that one coming in. Knew that Kenton would have a run. So he made the decision to go out and challenge. Is able to pick that one up pretty easily. And Glorioso lets it, or sees it go out of bounds. Kaufman sends it into play for Kenton. Right back out. It'll be Kenton throw. 
down the left side as sophomore forward Marlon Lopez actually leaves it and it will be Adam Kaufman to send it in. Kaufman plays it right at Lopez's feet as Kenton has done a nice job along the sidelines. They just haven't quite been able to get things centered and sent into the box. Allen is doing a nice job down there with numbers. Nice little one-two, but ultimately cut out by Mitchell Hawk. Now taken away and taken up the field by Logan Helzer. It's Kenton taking possession back. This is Jesse Janowski out of play, and he will throw it back in. Actually, he tosses it to captain Ethan Yoder. Yoder seeing varsity action for the fourth straight year. That ball out of play, and it'll be a goal kick for the Mustangs. Opening night of high school soccer here on WOSN. Allen East, the host at this great facility and a nice cool night. It was pretty hot when the girls game started and hot throughout most of that match. And now as the sun goes down and the lights come on, the breeze is feeling pretty good outside of the press box. Now we're up here sweating a little <laughs> bit, a little stuffy, but that's okay. Great backdrop for Ohio soccer. As you look back, cornfields are up. Nice breeze, sunset's going low. Couldn't ask for a better night to have an opening night for soccer. No question, that one. Nodded forward by Glorioso, now kicked up in behind the defense by Garrett Jennings. Giving chase is Jake Cox, but it's sent out of play. Now Jesse Janowski gives it right back to Yoder. Yoder looking to throw this up the left side. Such a strong throw in. As he got that about a quarter up the field just on the throw. Having a player on your team that has that kind of arm and is able to do that much with a throw and can really flip a field and is a huge benefit for the team. A dangerous ball knotted back to Newland, but no problem for him. And a nice punt up the field as it drops for Allen East. So this will be 21, Jake Cox. Cox to Jennings, back to Cox. Now a little pressure, sends the ball out of play. That was Marlon Lopez, the last to touch it. So a throw in to Allen East as Mitchell Hawk will toss it and our first substitute comes in. Nice little give and go that time from Jennings, but just out of the reach of his teammate. Kenton trying to possess. It's Gus Wingfield. Wingfield's pass to Yoder a little too hard. Yoder trying to chase, but good footwork there from Jennings. Now up the right side, here's Jake Cox. Cox sends it up. It's Justin Muller, pardon me. Now Schaefer, Schaefer gets around a defender on the right side. Schaefer maybe a chance to cross, takes a heavy touch. Now the cross comes into the box, swung on and missed by Garrett Jennings. He got a foot on it and it goes out of play for a Kenton goal kick, but good build up there and a really nice cross by Schaefer. Yeah, it was a great speed that time as he really turned it on to get around that defense. And, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes you watch warm-ups and you see what teams do, and it's not necessarily a game situation, but it's just getting them warmed up or, or they'll do things in warm-ups like, hey, we'd like to see you do this in the game, and you never quite see that translate. I can tell you what they did right there is exactly what I saw them doing in one of their drills for warm-up, sending three down, one going wide, going really far down, sending it right back up to the center and finishing in the back of the net. Everything went great except for just out of the reads of Jennings that time, and you know that Alanis would love to have that one back. Still trying to work it up the right side, though. Here's Justin Moeller. Moeller passes to the middle. Now they'll switch fields and play it on the left. That's Manny Reddig. Three Mustangs all in the same area. And ultimately taken away by Yoder. Yoder's pass knocked away, cut out by Emilio Reddig. Ball still in play on that far side. Now goes out for a Mustang throw. Nice throw high up the side, but not a down by Kenton. Now Yoder, and we've seen early, Kenton really trying to send that ball deep in behind the defense, but Newland well off the line, as he should be, as he gobbles that up. And you can see out there, you know, we're talking about the headers and winning those 50-50 balls. 
And right now, Kenton has a pretty significant size advantage over Allen East. As, you know, we mentioned them playing a lot of young players as well, kind of getting uh, their first look at varsity outside of a few uh, of the players. And Kenton trying to take advantage of that here in the early going. Mustangs win a throw on the near side. Mitchell Hawk comes over to throw it in. And a handball called as it hit Hawk in the bicep, it looks like. So a free kick here. Ethan Yoder will line it up. Yoder looking to the back post. Now sends it diagonally, knocked down by the Mustangs. Out of play for a Kenton throw. A couple more substitutions coming in. First ones of the night for Kenton. See number 25. Uh, Alex Miller coming in, number 14. And Carlos Herrera checking in for the Wildcats. Also had a substitution on the Mustang side as well. Graydon Cox. Cox checked in for Alan East. Now Kenton working it up the right side. Little one, two. Yoder behind the defense, and his shot goes wide right. Had a good look at it. Nice run. Didn't try to do too much with that shot. Just try to play it off the front of his foot. A little bit wide. Yeah, fortunately for Allen East, it's going to result in a goal kick. So it'll be Zane Newland to set it down and sends it down the right side. Picks out Moeller. Nice job cutting that one out by Joel Bowman, the senior defender. See here in the early going, Allen East not really having much luck in the middle of the field. The only time they've really been able to move it up is along those sidelines as Kenton has done a great job in the midfield, sending it back. And, and a tackle from behind. Referee says it's a foul. Free kick for Allen East as they look to play quickly. Sent down the right side. Nice ball grabbed by number six. That's Justin Muller. Mitchell Hawk throws it in. Jennings. Jennings, nice footwork as he comes back across and sends it to the defense and cut out by Hunter Taylor. There are five seniors starting for this Kenton team, but as I talked to Coach Bartlett before this game started, he said you're going to see a lot of freshmen, a lot of young players, and he wants to see how they do under the lights here. He said it's going to be an interesting year. He didn't necessarily say a bad year. Just not quite sure early on in the season what he will have. I think when you have a lot of those freshmen, right, you just want to see how they respond to game action. Yeah. You know, on the other side, Allen East, you know, they have six seniors on this team, but they're also playing a lot of guys who are getting varsity time for the first time. And when you get a new new coach, it comes along with new philosophies, new formations, a lot of things that you have to get used to. Even if you've been playing soccer at the varsity level for three, four years, it, it's de it's almost like being a freshman again as you get out here for the first time. Good point. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Kenton, a little one-touch pass, but nice job cutting that out by number four. That's Logan Helzer. That pass goes out of play. So, Kenton probably with more possession than Allen East. We don't have possession stats necessarily. I don't think it's too lopsided, but certainly feel like Kenton has spent most of the time with the ball. I suppose that could be argued, though. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I think you're right, though. I think they've spent more time with the ball, and they've definitely spent more time down on the offensive side than they have defensively, as Allen East has had, you know, a, a, one good opportunity, but for the most part has had to play defense. Now some space as that one sent up. Over the defense, but a nice job by the goalkeeper coming off the line. That's MJ Colson Harper. First time I've seen him touch the ball tonight. You saw a little bit of a miss hit that time. Kenton was fortunate that they had enough defenders down there to mark everybody because that could have been disastrous for the Wildcats. Here's Yoder with some space. Sends a diagonal down the right side, but too much pace and out for a goal kick. But again, we, we continue to see Kenton from the midfield trying to send those diagonals in behind the defense. They just haven't been able to run onto them yet. And they had a good opportunity there. It looked like they were going to be able to connect on that one, but just too much on it as it went out. And you know, some of that's the first game jitters, that adrenaline finally being out here playing a real game for once and you know, instead of practice or a scrimmage. And you get a little bit too excited when you see your teammate that wide open. 
Now Allen East working it up the right side. They've spent a majority of their time with the ball on the right. Now switching fields, pass behind the target, but still ends up at the foot of Cole Barton. Now Barton ahead for Schaefer. Substitutes checking in. Justin Houston, as well as number 12, that is Reese Parker. So throw in on the far side, and it'll be Emilio Reddig coming over to toss it in. Reddig sends it in for Jennings. Nice job stepping over by Bowman as he knocks it up and to the left. Alex Miller a little space as he kicks it in behind. He knows he's got speed. Tries to get around his defender. He does, but a nice job sliding over and helping by Helzer. And Allen East, very fortunate right there as you saw Kenton had a nice run and the speed almost took over. The Allen East defender got a little lazy there towards the end, thought his keeper was going to come out and get it. Kind of got caught in no man's land, but fortunately for Allen East, they were able to come up with the save. The ball goes out of play. Mustang throw. 24 minutes to play here in the first half. Still 0-0 on that Kenton Moose scoreboard. Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at KentonMoose428.com. In the girls' game before this one, we didn't see a single goal in the first half. And Allen East opening the floodgates and scoring four in the second half. Yeah, yep, scored four, uh, ended up winning that one, four nothing over Kenton. But you know, that Allen East team, they had a lot of opportunities early as Kenton's looking for one right here. Nice hustle play come across to take that one away. And a goal kick once again. Kenton disagrees. You can see Alex Miller just seems to have a different kind of gear for speed out there as he's been able to turn it on and get almost behind the defense every time on those runs as he is just inches away from having himself a clear shot. Alan East has got to make sure that they play that one tightly because if he gets around, he's going to be gone. And he got a nice strong kick on him, looking for a good opportunity for a goal. Now Mitchell Hawk, Hawk with Alex Miller bearing down. Now the ball sent back, Joel Bowman runs onto it. Bowman up to Yoder, nice step though, but we're gonna have an offside. Oh, that's 21, Jake Cox behind the defense and really can't blame him, he didn't really expect the ball to bounce off of his player behind the defense. Yeah, he just kind of got caught in, in a bad spot there as the ball moved back up towards the other end. He kind of was just watching the play develop, and it came back very quickly. Offsides call. Easy one for the officials to make. And the free kick goes straight out of play, so the Mustangs will throw it in as Manny Reddick checks in, and we step aside. 21-45 to play here at Allen East. 0-0 zero, zero the score. Welcome back to High School Soccer on WOSN. Allen East and Kenton knotted up at zero here at Allen East High School. Good win field, the site for the opening night of high school soccer in the state of Ohio and right here on WOSN. Excited to bring you coverage of all sports this season. Football and volleyball starting up next week and Soccer kicking things off. Now Allen East perhaps a chance, but a nice job there by Bowman using his strength to fend off the attacking offensive player. And I love how the junior Jennings just continues to try to put the pressure downfield. He's been putting some nice balls and some good touches on there just right now. Haven't been able to finish, have been the Mustangs, but if he keeps putting that pressure on there, Allen East will have an opportunity hopefully to get one through. Kenton working with it. Now the ball sent to the right side. We've seen a few of those in Newland again. A nice job coming off his line 
and gobbling that one up. He's been nice and active back there. And those are the type of plays that you can't hesitate about. Mm -hmm. Once he decided he was going, even when it looked like the Kenton player was getting close, he didn't second guess himself. He went after it because if he had hesitated for a second, he is way out of position and Kenton has a really easy opportunity for a goal. Now plenty of time for the Mustangs. The pass knocked down by Adam Kaufman, but ends up going to Mitchell Hawk. Now up top with Justin Houston. Houston gives it to Eisen Schaefer with a little bit of space. Now Schaefer passes down the left side. Maybe a chance here developing. Allen East with it. Ultimately knocked away, but Mitchell Hawk will get it back. Now Kenton with Adam Kaufman. Kaufman, nice job getting around the defense, but Mitchell Hawk does a nice job stepping up and I believe in the girls game we called a Hawk name quite a bit on the defensive end. <laughs> yeah, we did. The defense runs in the Hawk family. Ashley Hawk um, really took it at, took into, uh, took the defense, you know, under control and, and really led that unit in that first game. And we're seeing a lot of that here in the second uh, game as well. This one off of Alanis, nice, so it'll be a throw for Kenton. Yoder comes over. Yoder sends it behind the defense, trying to use that speed of Alex Miller. Miller bearing down. Miller gets around the defense, and his cross. That ball might have been out before he crossed it in anyway, but into the side netting. And Miller not quitting on that one down there. Didn't just give up and let that one go to Alanis, nice, force the issue, and almost was able to make something out of nothing. 18 minutes, 45 seconds to play. First half of action, still scoreless on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. That one out of play. It'll stay with the Mustangs. High toss, and Yoder's there again. He's all over the place. Been on the left side, on the right side, just basically wherever the action is. Yeah, and you'd expect that out of your four-year uh, varsity player. You know, the senior, very active, had a lot of minutes under his belt. And, you know, especially as you're trying to get a, a, a new group of, um, you know, essentially a whole new group of players going and trying to get things going with this new team. You know, you'd, you'd want to see that out of him, trying to lead on the field like that. Pass cut out by Alan East's Garrett Jennings, but out of play. It'll be a throw for the Wildcats. Two teammates ran into each other there. One went down. You've seen Kenton continuing to put pressure on this Allen East defense. They've gotten it deep into the box so far, but not too many clean looks. As you see, Jennings with really good footwork, but just got tripped up that time. Yoder trying to chase it down for Kenton, and he does. Yoder with it, and still has possession. Here's Yoder, gets Almost past the defender, but gets it right back. Yoder pokes it into the box, and no one there. I think he was expecting his teammate, Marlon Lopez, on the right side to make a run. Didn't get it, and so Newland comes out once again. Nice punt once again into the offensive third, and Alan East now threatening just like that. Ball down the left side, still on side. Maybe a chance. Here's a cross. Knocked down by Hunter Taylor. Still with Eisen Schaefer. Schaefer gets past one man, gets past another. Schaefer in the box, takes a shot, knocked away. That'll go out of play. It'll be a throw for the Mustangs, but a nice job by Schaefer getting around a few guys and getting a shot on goal. Yeah, and Schaefer just not giving up on that ball initially. It looked like he was just trying to find some space to send a cross over into the box, but as it Open and developed, he kept the under possession and almost able to squeeze one in there. Now Kenton, the counterattack down the right side. Here comes Marlon Lopez. Lopez to the middle. Here's Miller. Miller tries the pass. It's knocked away by Allen East and falls into the paws of Newland. Yeah, that time it looked like Miller probably had a better opportunity if he just would have tried to keep that one himself and send a shot in, but tried to thread the needle. His teammate wasn't coming anyway, so even if he would have gotten through there, it's probably going to go out of bounds. And Allen, he's fortunate to get it back. Kenton fighting for possession. That's Tainai Saitov. 
Saitov gets it ahead. It's Carlos Herrera, but cut out. Now Yoder gets past one man, but nice job by Jennings stepping up and taking it back. Back and forth we go. Now down the right side. Here's Lopez, maybe a chance to cross, cuts it back inside. Now crosses, and that one's cut out nicely. That was the captain, one of the captains, Logan Helser, intercepting that pass. And now Kenton with a few substitutions as Chris Villa checks in. And Gus Wingfield, excuse me. So two more starters back into the game for Alan East, or for Kenton, excuse me. And it was a great job by Hessler right there. If he doesn't come in, it comes out of nowhere to get his foot on that one and send it out. Kenton's looking at a pretty good look. Yoder goes over on the right side to throw this one in. Yoder over the head of Marlon Lopez. Now the Mustangs trying to counter. Maybe some space if they can keep it in play. They do. And a nice tackle there. Well, maybe the referee said not a nice tackle. We'll see. I can't tell if it went out or if it's a free kick. Everybody looks like they're continuing to move down the field, so I think Alan Issa is going to get the free kick. They will indeed. The Mustangs a free kick from about 55 yards out. Looks like Jennings over there on the far side, as long as my eyes aren't deceiving me. These eyes get older and older, man. Every year I have more and more trouble seeing those numbers on the far side, especially during these night games. Yeah, I keep pretending like I don't need to bring glasses with me, but <laughs> I think I might have to just go ahead and stop denying that fact. Well, I even have glasses on and I'm struggling, <laughs> so I don't know if that's going to help. We just need to invest in some binoculars, I suppose. 13-24 to play. Yoder picks it up, throws it in quickly down the left side. Trying to run onto it is Gus Wingfield, but scooting over and ushering it out is Logan Helser. Couple more substitutions coming in. Number 21, Jake Cox coming into the game. Looks like Justin Moeller checking in as well for the Mustangs as Newland gets ready to send this back into play. He'll play it short. They'll work from the back. Here's Helser. Helser passes it up. Good athleticism there by Adam Kaufman as he raises his leg to knock it down. Now out of play and it will be Alan East throw. Jennings trying to work through some traffic, getting some pressure from Kaufman, doing a nice job staying with him, playing physical, but Kenton able to keep that possession. Good movement from Kenton here. Jennings probably one of the smaller ones on the field, but you can tell that kid is not afraid of contact at all, being aggressive, mixing it up, not shying away from any of that. Played a lot of soccer in his career, and you can see that immediately here tonight. No question at all. Here's Yoder. Yoder to the left side. Gus Wingfield. Wingfield. And he runs right through the back of Mitchell Hawk, who did a nice job there shielding him off, drawing the foul and the free kick. Newland slides over. He'll take down the right side. Now with Ty Nye side off. Yoder down the right side. No one there, though. It will go out for throw-in. Deep in the corner, though, and it doesn't look like Kenton is going to try to pin him there as they give Alanis some space to send this ball in down the left side. Cut out and knocked out by Austin Chen. So the Mustangs will do it again from a little bit closer. Just under 11 minutes to play now. First half of action, Kenton Moose scoreboard still reads 0-0. Zero, zero. Kenton has spent a lot of time on offense, haven't been able to break through as we mentioned how many offensive scores they lost from last year, still trying to figure out who 
those new offensive threats are going to be. And for Allen East, but you got to feel uh, that some confidence growing as they've been able to kind of shut them out and give themselves some opportunities. They've they've missed two great looks uh, at goals, you know, but as they're also kind of starting to work through some of these growing pains as well. Yeah, no question. And as much as Kenton, as much time as Kenton has spent in the offensive third, they really haven't registered any dangerous chances, right? They haven't made Newland work too much in terms of making saves. And Newland's certainly active back there coming off his line. But you'd expect a few more better opportunities for Kenton, and we just haven't seen that yet. Now Alan East trying to get something going. Nearing their final third, they switch over to the left side. It's Reese Parker over there fending off a few defenders, and his pass taken away by Chris Villa. Villa down the right side. Here's Marlon Lopez. Lopez, he's cut off. A good job there by Jennings. Jennings been a nice, or done a nice job, excuse me, in the midfield, coming back defensively. Yeah, he's been very active. You know, quick player, knows his way around the ball very well. As this one's going to get played over to him. Jennings going to send this one up one more time. A feed almost gets through that back line, but Ken's able to send it away. As once again, Jennings right in the thick of things. So throw on the far side. Ball taken away, though. Yoder touches to his right. Now sends this, tries to send it down the left, but is cut out by Hawk. And we've got a call in midfield that's against Kenton. Yoder, more good footwork. And again, they keep trying to send that ball diagonally. Most of the time you see it going to the right side, that time to the left. Now ball gets behind the defense, but up comes the keeper, MJ Colson Harper. Yoder. Alan East has been in the right position for most of this first half. You talked about the repetitive trying to send it down and hoping to get behind that back line. And Allen East doing a great job be staying home in position. As a little bit of a run right there, not able to finish it as that one goes out. So Colson Harper will put it down for a goal kick. But it looks like it's going to be Hunter Taylor to take it. A speedy Alex Miller will check in and play on the right side as Marlon Lopez exits. We've seen Alex Miller spending most of his time on the left. Ball played up to Chris Villa. Villa plays it through. Here's Gus Wingfield. Wingfield cuts inside, but he's met by a few defenders and has to send it backward. Here's Ethan Yoder. Yoder over to the right side. That's Austin Chen. Chen's pass to Miller. Tough to handle and goes out of play as we have four substitutions and we'll step aside for just a moment with seven minutes to play here in the first half. It's still 0-0 right here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Kent Moose Family Center. The Kent Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's Kent Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at kentonmoose428.com. Welcome back to Goodwin Field here at Allen East High School. Six and a half to play. Battle between Kenton and Allen East. Evan Skilleter, Nate Garlock with you tonight. Great night for opening night of soccer. A little bit warm as we started the first game at 6 o'clock, and it steadily cooled off, and now a very, very pleasant evening here in Eastern Allen County. It's been a great night for soccer. As both of these teams have had their moments. The defenses are standing tall as we're in that 0-0 tie as we creep towards halftime. But... A lot of fast-paced, up-and-down action here out of both teams. Ball 
ball played up. It ends up getting behind the Mustang defense, but no one from Kenton there as it's played back to Newland, and he'll send this to safety out to the right side. Kenton wins a throw. Oh, no, it is Kenton ball. Jennings that time trying to get away with an extra possession. Always appreciate the effort. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now up the left. Stopping is Gus Wingfield. Wingfield on the right foot, sends it to the top of the box. Here's a shot, and it's wide left. I think Newland saw that wide all the way, but a decent look there for Kenton, one of the better looks we've seen so far. Yeah, Newland did a great job. You could tell he had that one red the whole time. Real no sense of urgency. Knew that one was going to end up flying out. As Kenton just trying to send something towards the net that time. I think maybe rush that one a little bit. Thought he might be able to get a little chip into the back of the net. But Alanise holds strong one more time as this one's going to roll out. And this time, I believe it'll be a corner for Kenton. This will be the first, first corner for either team here tonight. Oh, pardon me, it's a throw in from the corner. The official comes in from the far side, says throw in. And they might have changed and it. it. I think like he looked over to the other again. referee, and they got it sorted out. So it will be a corner. And this is, I believe, Austin Chen. It might be Wingfield. Tough to see from this angle. It's Wingfield. Sends it back post over everybody. Miller trying to run it down and keep it in, keep it in play. Excuse me. Not able to do so. And it's out for a goal kick. Just under four to play in the first half. Talked about it at the top of the broadcast, but the Mustangs 2-12 and 2 a season ago. Kenton 14-4 and 1, but that 14-4 and 1 was led by about five or six guys that are not on this team anymore. Yeah, both these teams are very different than the teams that they were last year. On the one side, you, know, you have Kenton who has to pretty much remake their entire offense and you know, kind of form a new identity from who they were last year. Alan East on the other side, even though they still have a lot of those familiar faces, you know, brand new coaching staff, a brand new style of play, formations, a little bit of everything kind of fitting in there. And so both these teams right now just trying to kind of figure out who they are here in the early going. Yeah, and I, and I like that you mentioned at the top of the broadcast that there still is a lot of experience coming back for Kenton even though it's not offensive production they still have some guys that have been in this program for quite a while and I'm sure they're leaning heavily on those guys Ethan Yoder certainly one of them kind of commanding the midfield here he is with the ball he'll play this down the right side but once again Newland knows exactly where to be and he dives over and grabs it no fear Newland as he went out there as Miller was coming like a freight train and Newland gave up his body was able to get on that one in time Sends this one back up towards midfield. And I'll be interested if Kenton tries to change things up in the second half with their offensive approach because as much as they've tried to send those diagonal balls wide, they really haven't found any success from it. Yeah, it's pretty clear that Kenton came in with that strategy, and they, they must have really thought that that was going to be a weak point of this Mustang team, and they were going to be able to get some good runs off of those plays. But so far, Allen East holding strong and really been able to shut those down. Adam Kaufman checking back in for Kenton, and he'll play up top in a central forward role. Ball sent up the right side. Brought down by Kenton's Carlos Herrera. Herrera trying to fight for possession. The whistle blows, and it's a free kick for Kenton. Ball placed down. About 46 yards out, 47 yards out or so. Three guys on the back post, or the back side of the box, excuse me. This one played a little bit low, and Allen East no problem cutting that out. Here's Herrera. Herrera up the right side, one touch pass, and cut out once again by the Mustangs. And this defense has done a really nice job anytime Kenton's tried to play the ball through the middle. Yeah, every time it looks like maybe there's an opening there, they're trying to fit it through there. See one of those blue jerseys coming through and sending it the other way. Now Herrera, and again, taken away, but only as far as Kenton's Joel Bowman. 
So Kent really trying to put the pressure on now. With only 40 seconds left to go in the half. And it's Alanis defense trying to stand tall. 33 seconds to play. Looks like a long throw in coming up. Yoder steps up, sends it to the edge of the box. Kaufman tried to nod it backward, but just missed. A little bit of a scrum as that one comes out into the middle, but Alan East does a nice job sending that down the field. Eyes and Schaefer not able to catch up to it, so out of play for a Kenton throw. And with seven seconds, that's probably just about it here for the first half. Score at halftime 0 0 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard as we. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton, online at kentonmoose428.com. Welcome you back to Allen East High School and Goodwin Field as the score is tied 0-0 between the Allen East Mustangs and the Kenton Wildcats as we begin the second half of action. Evan Skilleter, Nate Garlock with you. And Nate, no goals to speak of, but two teams that really look formidable out there. Yeah, you know, I think it was a very evenly matched first half. Um, it did seem like Kenton probably spent a little bit more time on the offensive end than Allen East did, but that Allen East defense really played strong, especially that back line. Did a great job every time Kenton was trying to make a run. We saw Kenton try to make a lot of long passes and get things going off of that far corner, and Allen East was there to deny them every time. And that's kind of what we're looking for here in the second half. We talked about it at the end of the first half. Is Kenton going to switch up their offensive style and try something different because those diagonal balls, those long through passes up and over the defense really haven't worked too much because the goalkeeper in the back, Zane Newland, has done a really nice job coming off his line and not allowing those passes to connect. Here's Garrett Jennings. He was very active in that first half. Saw him do a lot of good things for this Mustang team. He's immediately getting involved and staying aggressive. Now a little too much contact there by Gus Wingfield as he's tacked with the foul and a free kick to Allen East. It'll be Emilio Reddig putting it down and sending it up. Now Allen East trying to get something going down the left side. And they just send this out of play. So. A throw for the Mustangs, quickly sent in. And here's Eisen Schaefer. Schaefer's shot is knocked down. We saw Schaefer in the first half have a great run as well. Was able to get around the defense and sent it right back up the middle. But Jennings just out of his reach, not able to get a foot on it. And that time Schaefer almost able to make it happen once again. Goal kick for the Kenton Wildcats. Last season, 14, four and one for the Wildcats. Allen East, 2 12 and two, first round exit. But it, we've talked about it a couple times. The younger program here still, still growing and uh, a lot of pretty good upperclassmen as we've seen so far tonight. And when Coach Bender said, you know, there's a lot of talent on this team. Um, you know, he's, ha he's happy with the athletes that he has. He, he thinks there's a lot of talent here. It's just about getting them to mesh and getting them used to playing together and under, the, you know, the new philosophy and the new formations that they're doing. But he thinks there's a lot of promise on this team. And kind of, you know, if you saw our first broadcast of the night for the girls game, we, you know, we kind of talked about how the Kenton girls, you know, a lot of fresh faces, a lot of new people, and it was going to take some time, but this team had a lot of growth potential and was going to look very different, you know, probably just even in a few weeks, not even at the end of the season. And I think you're kind of looking for the same thing out of this Allen East Mustang team is, you know, this is a team that has speed. We, we know that. We've been able to see that here tonight. The defense is very strong here from the, the onset, you know, but you give them a few weeks, get them some more game um you know, some more game time here, and they get this, get some more things underneath their belt. And this is a team that can grow very quickly. No question. As Kenton will throw from the far side, Yoder sends it in for Adam Kaufman. Kaufman tries to send it back to Yoder, but miss hits it and it ends up going out of play. It'll be a Mustang throw. 
both these teams still trying to figure out some offense and just need someone to break through. And the defense is right now, though, continuing to put the clamps on. Ball sent back for number three. That's Emilio Redig, sorry. And we'll toss down the left side. They were looking for Adam Kaufman, but it's cut out. Both teams jostling for possession. Now Allen East called for a foul, so a free kick in a relatively dangerous position here for Kenton. It'll be Joel Bowman coming up to take it. Just too much contact there on that header as Allen East trying to be aggressive and just went over the top. Bowman. Sends this one to the top of the box, knocked down by Reddick. Reddick sends it forward, but it's knotted down by Hunter Taylor. Yoder, back heel. And no call there as referee says both players initiated contact. Nice little move there from Yoder. Yoder's going to try a shot. That's well wide. Yeah, Yoder obviously trying to get that one to turn a little bit more, hoping to maybe put it up in the top corner, but ends up wide on that shot. And you know, back to the no whistle. I think it was a good no whistle as you saw the Allen East player kind of go up and he wasn't really in control of his body. So it's really hard to then penalize the Kenton player for sure. just being there. Yeah, no question. This ball played on the ground. Up for Jennings. Jennings has it taken away. Here's Micah Bowman. Ball batted around just a bit. Gus Wingfield. Ball in the box. Wingfield trying to get possession. Ultimately knocked out of play, and it's a Kenton throw. Good defensive stand by Allen East there. There's a lot of traffic in front of the net, a dangerous spot. But Allen East, they stayed home there, stayed physical, and able to get that one out. Yoder looks like he's lining up a long throw. He's going to put this into the box, sending it straight at the goalkeeper. Knotted up in the air, out of the box. Still a fight for possession as Jennings sends it forward, but Yoder runs on the end of it. Yoder's throw-ins are so strong. There's not a lot of players that can put that right at the goalie's feet from that far away. Ball finally cleared out of the box. Almost seemed like maybe a little bit of miscommunication right there as both players kind of hesitated before they were finally able to clear it. And now it's a foot race as Allen East trying to get something going toward the goal. Schaefer with it. Schaefer sends it out to the left. And it goes out of play for a Kenton throw. Great hustle by Jennings, almost able to get to it and save that one. And it looks like he actually might be a little shaken up, a little slow to get up. As it looks like the coaching staff is calling for a stoppage here, as they're going to check out Jennings. 32.57 to go. We'll step aside as they attend to Jennings. You're watching High School Soccer on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at kentonmoose428.com. 0-0 zero, zero on that scoreboard. 32-57 and counting to play here on opening night of high school soccer. Evan Skilleter, Nate Garlock with you from Goodwin Field. As Alan East welcomes WBL or the WBL's Kenton Wildcats, excuse me. Still no score. Kenton trying to get something going and pass cut out. Nice hustle come from behind to take that one back because the Wildcats will go ahead and keep that possession. Both these defenses on both sides have stood really strong as Kenton, though, has kind of taken over here in the last few minutes and spent a lot of time trying to play offense. This ball sent wide of the goal, so out for a goal kick. And coming into the game is number six, Justin Moeller for Allen East. <laughs> looks like Jennings is going to check back into the game, so it looks like he's going to be okay. Now Newland with the goal kick, sending it down the right side and out of play.
ball pinged back and forth. Kenton trying to get possession, and they do with Yoder. He takes a shot. It's deflected. Wingfield ends up on the end of it, and obviously a tough ball to control as he shoots it, but well wide of the goal. Probably had some weird spin on it as well as it took that deflection off the defender. Yeah, we talked about Yoder quite a bit tonight as he has stayed very active, the senior doing a little bit of everything for Kenton in that time, trying to just make something happen and force the issue. And then Kenton with the fortunate deflection. Now, and he's lucky that time that that one didn't find itself into the net. Now Schaefer gives chase, but Joel Bowman able to get a foot on it out of play for an Allen East throw. Cole Barton to throw for the Mustangs up the left side. No one there as it's knocked down by Hunter Taylor. Now nodded back to Joel Bowman. Hunter Taylor steps up. Jennings trying to get around him and does. Jennings up the right side. Allen East, maybe a chance developing. Here's the cross into the box. It's cut out by Jesse Janowski. That time it looked like Allen East just a little bit out of position that time. I think they were anticipating that that cross was going to move forward instead of came back and really nobody there to try to pick that one up. Now sent back into the play, left side, Micah Bowman. Bowman tries to play it forward. Cut out by Helser. Now down the right side, but no one making that run, so it'll go harmlessly out for a goal kick. And Jennings that time assuming that his teammate was going to go once he had stopped it. Put a little extra on that one, tried to get in the run out. But Kenton going to get the goal kick. Graydon Cox checks in for the first time. Allen East staying active. Been kind of the first time here in the second half where they've really kind of controlled things offensively. But as soon as I start saying that, here comes Kenton back the other way. Ball passed back. This is Lopez. Marlon Lopez. Now a nice ball played over the top. Can they keep it in play? They do. Back for Lopez. A little bit of space. Top of the box. Lopez drops it back. Now at the edge, it's Bowman. And taken away by the Mustangs. Cleared away. But played right back into the box. Stepping in was Adam Kaufman. Now Yoder gets possession. Yoder, nowhere to go with it. It's taken away. That was Cole Barton. Now nodded forward. Schaefer's got some speed. Schaefer has it taken away. That's great defense on the recovery by Joel Bowman. Certainly a lot of contact, but probably not a lot to call. That's one of those not enough to call. Excuse well, that's me. one of those ones. If you're the coaching staff, you're like, hey, next time he nudges you like that, go, just go just down. Just go, go flying. Go, go, go. <laughs> get yep. the, let's get that. That would have been that would have been a huge setup there for Allen East, but they are going to end up with the corner kick out of it. Or no, they yes, it is going to be a corner kick. So Allen East with their first corner kick of the game. Jennings to the back post. Ball gets through everybody. Mustang's able to keep it in play. Now maybe another chance to cross. Send into the box, cut out. Now Kenton trying to break. They actually had Gus Wingfield behind the defense and on the correct side of midfield. If they would have played it over to the top, he would have been all alone. But nice job by the Mustangs knocking it away. Hey, well, you've seen Allen East really hustle here, and it really kind of feels like they've picked up their intensity in the second half. We're seeing them almost with a second wind moving quickly. They've been able to get around defenders and giving themselves a few more opportunities than we saw them get in the first half. Be thrown in by Cole Barton. Barton looking down the left side, and it's just off the head of Adam Kaufman, or pardon me, that's 15, Austin Chen. Jennings sends it in. Jennings across, back post, out comes the goalkeeper, and Colson Harper with the grab, and now a quick throw. 
Tell you what, they should consider looking at him at quarterback as he <laughs> threw that ball about 50 yards down the field. A lot of contact on the far side. No call, though. Ball sent back for Ethan Yoder. Yoder plays it to Kaufman. Kaufman, diagonal ball into the box. And who touched it last? And it does look like the Allen East player did a nice job of moving around that ball and not letting it deflect off of him. See if the official agrees. I think he called offside. Yeah, he called yeah, offside he, he on the did. play. Mm. Yeah, he did call offside officially. So it'll be a free kick as Newland puts it down. Ball cut out. Micah Bowman. Bowman on the run. Makes a move past the defender. But the touch too heavy. Bowman, though, still with it. Now sends it outside. Bowman back. The shot. Big save right there. First time we've really seen Newland challenged in the goal. And he stood tall that time as Kenton had done a great job of getting it to the middle of the field. And they sent a strong kick towards the net. But Newland stood tall. Gets his first Real challenging save here of the night. Yeah, good hands too as that one was fired. That's one of those you see coming out of the jug machine at NFL practices as it goes right into his paws and he holds on. 25 minutes and change to play. Still 0-0 on that Kenton Moose scoreboard. Several substitutions coming in. You see Alex Miller, number 25, number 14. Carlos Herrera coming in for Kenton. And Allen East also had a substitution. It's going to be number Hawk. Sorry. Nope, number five, Mitchell Hawk. Like you said, he came into the game as well. Kaufman runs into trouble, and it's taken away, but only briefly. A couple players tumble, no call. Now in behind is Schaefer. Schaefer maybe a chance. He shoots into the net. The first goal of this game goes to the Allen East Mustangs. And Allen East kind of beat Kenton at their own game. We saw Kenton try to do that exact thing the entire first half, and the defense of Allen East stood tall. That time, Schaefer used that speed that we've seen him use so effectively all night long to finally shake loose, and was able to put it past the keeper for the first goal. 24-29, it's 1-0. The Mustangs on top at home. And what a goal there. The Kenton Moose scoreboard finally has a tally. And it's Eisen Schaefer. Schaefer with three goals last year. Already one-third of the way there on opening night. Now Kenton back to work trying to get back into this one. Down the right side, Wingfield a chance to cross. He cuts it back in. Now crosses back post and just out of reach of his teammate, number 25, Alex Miller. And it looked like Miller didn't quite know what to do as that ball was chest high and close to his arm, and so he really couldn't do a whole lot with it. Yeah, it was a great feed, and Miller was in the right position, but just kind of got caught um, in the air. And Kenton missed a great opportunity that time. And, and back to the Allenies goal, too. I think we're going to be a little remiss if we don't mention that the pass that sent it in there. You saw Garrett Jennings sent a great ball up, timed it good, got it through the defense, and it made that goal by Schaefer possible. Good catch there as the assist goes to Jennings. The goal goes to Schaefer. Now Kenton back to work. This ball played forward but cut out by Emilio Reddig. And now does Alan East switch their strategy and kind of sag back a little bit and try to park the bus? I wouldn't yet with 23, sec or you know, 23 minutes I left. Mean, you know, if you're the coaching staff, you probably don't feel like you have to considering the fact that your defense has done such a great job tonight anyway. So keep letting them do their thing. And, you know, we have seen, seen Kenton, though, here in the last few minutes get some good opportunities. So you kind of wonder if you, you know, how confident you're feeling that those guys aren't starting to fatigue. Some substitutes checking into the game. 23 in for the Mustangs. That is Justin Houston. And 21. Jake Cox checking in, a freshman starter for the Mustangs. Tainai Saitov checking in for Kenton. Throw for the Mustangs on the far side in their defensive third. Little 
will fight for possession. Ultimately goes out, and it will be a Kenton throw. They have 21 minutes and 55 seconds to tie this game. Yoder comes up and cuts it out. Yoder, a little bit of space, tries to spin, and he tumbles. Call is against the Mustangs, so a free kick for Kenton. See Yoder trying to have a little bit of a sense of urgency right there, trying to make something happen. Ends up getting the whistle for his team. Free kick lined up by Bowman. That's Joel Bowman. 38 yards out, sent away. Now Schaefer, a little bit of space. He stops, gets around one defender. Still looking for somewhere to go with it. Still working up the left side. Schaefer still working, now cuts it back. And it's taken away. Yeah, Schaefer did a great job that time, not trying to force the issue. Made sure that he got himself deep enough into his own team's territory that when he did finally send that over, you know, it would give Alan East a good opportunity to at least stay on this side of the field. Down the right side. Brought down by Wingfield. Dropped back for Yoder. Yoder back over the top. Wingfield's going to try to run onto this one. Chasing it down, though, is Logan Helser. Back line for Allen East has some wheels. Not only have they done a really nice job keeping everything in front of them when it has gotten behind, they've done a nice job recovering. Yeah, they absolutely have. And, you know, you would think at some point you start to see kind of a drop off in that speed, but it's almost like you're seeing them get faster. Well, it's getting cooler, right? <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> think about true. the girls game. It was pretty hot the entire time, and now the sun isn't beating down on that turf. And I'll tell you what. Anytime you play on turf when that sun is beating down on it, the temperature coming off of the turf is incredible. So I'm sure it's a, a nice night for them as well. Treating us to a pretty fun athletic looking game of soccer here on opening night. This one goes backward out of play and it's a Mustang throw. Under 20 minutes to play, 1-0. The Mustangs on top on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Nice clearance there. It's Emilio Reddig. Ball nodded back to the goalkeeper as he grabs that, no problem. MJ Colson Harper, the senior goalkeeper for Kenton. Boots this one up the field and out of play. No one touched it, so Alan East will have a throw. It's actually been one of those things with Colson where it's actually looked like his throw-ins have been way more effective than, than his kicks have been. As that one ended up out of bounds, but we just saw him a couple of possessions before throw it probably about 20 yards farther. Yeah, absolutely. That one cut out in midfield, brought down by Jake Cox. Now Manny Reddick trying to get to it. The ball sent up in the air as Colson catches it. Looked a little bit like a football catch right there, like he was receiving a punt, which on the gridiron reminds me next week. We start our football coverage on WOSN. Check us out on Thursday and Friday. Lots of games coming your way as football season will be in full swing week one. It's always one of the more exciting weeks because, you know, everybody is tired of kind of practice and two-a-days, and they're ready to get out there and see what they have. Absolutely. And you'll be calling the Shawnee LCC game on Thursday. I'll be at Pandora for Pandora Columbus Grove. Full slate of action, though, on WOSN and WTLW. Mustangs with it in the middle of the field. Possession pinged back and forth. Stepping up is Hunter Taylor. A couple players tumble and a foul is, no it's not, pardon me. It's just a throw in on the far side as a substitute, Justin Muller checking in for Allen East. Mustang throw.
Knocked up in the air by Tainai Saitov. Brought down by Jennings, sent forward. Eisen Schaefer on the bench currently trying to get a rest. He's made a couple sprints, almost 100 meter looking sprints here as of late. Now an injured player for Allen East on the far side. They'll stop the clock at 16.38 and we will step aside. One nothing your score here. WOSN. Welcome back to Goodwin Field at Allen East, where the Mustangs lead 1 0 over the traveling Kenton Wildcats. Evan Skilleter and Nate Garlock with you tonight. Injured player able to get back up right away, so glad to see that. Play continues here. Ball sent forward. Here's Manny Reddig. He's dispossessed as Austin Chen slides over, sends it down the right side. Out of play as Chen picks it up to throw it in. Clock never started over here. So referee will have a quick word. Let us know how much time needs to go on the clock. 16.01, says Randy Keeler, the referee. So now we will restart play on the near side. Micah Bowman throws it down the right side. Referee says weren't quite ready to go, so... Bowman will send it back for Ethan Yoder, who will put it in play. That ball crossed but knocked down. Maybe a chance to send it back into the box, though. No, it rolls out. Imagine Yoder. We've seen him throw a couple long. Actually, he's going to head into the box, and throwing it in is Carlos Herrera. Herrera. Into the box. Allen East clears it out, though. Garrett Jennings doing a nice job sending it back to the other end of the field. And this Allen East defense continues to play really well tonight. Yeah, every time it seems like maybe Kenton is kind of wearing them down or fi found maybe a, an area of weakness, Allen East has stood tall and able to send them back. And the junior Jennings one more time able to get his foot on it. Kaufman, Villa, and Lopez all checking in for the Wildcats. And it looks like Eisen Schaefer checking back in for Allen East. And Reese Parker as well. Kenton really has nobody that can match the speed of Schaefer. As you gotta imagine, Allen East would love to see him get shook and loose one more time. This one all the way down the right side. It goes out of play, so Kenton will put it back in. Hunter Taylor down the left side finds Saitov. And goes back out. This time it's Mustang's throw. They'll do it again off the head of Kenton. Now Yoder pops it up in the air. Haven't really seen too much good possession here <laughs> in the last minute or so as both teams trying to get some control of the ball. And I think if you're Alan East right now too with that, with that lead that you're trying to protect, it's just a matter of trying to do whatever you can to keep Kenton from getting this deep as they immediately go on a run. Good feed into the box, but taken away one more time by that back line of Alan East. That ball goes out of play. It'll be a throw for Kenton. Yoder will grab it. He's thrown a couple long ones, but he hasn't quite gotten it to the middle of the box. It's more like the front edge. This one will be the same. It gets through, but knocked up in the air. Now maybe a shot swung on and missed. Adam Kaufman trying to swing, and that ball was bouncing everywhere, so a tough one to make contact with. 
as it goes out of play. Yeah, it looked like he had a lane, too. If he was able to get his foot on that one, might have been able to get a, a clean shot at the goal. But fortunate for Alan East, he whiffed. Jennings was right there to send it back once again. So here's a throw on the far side with just under 13 minutes to play. Still 1-0 after the Eisen Schaefer goal. This ball sent toward the goal, but wide left, so a goal kick. Newland to the left side, finds his teammate Justin Muller, but misplayed, although Alan is still able to send it toward midfield. Brought down by Bowman. Bowman to Yoder. Yoder's going to try one touch, and it's saved right there by Newland. Yoder with a great shot from distance. Newland just able to get a hold of it. Newland keeps the egg on the board for Kenton. Wildcats back to work, though. Adam Kaufman gives it to Yoder. A little bit of space as Yoder sends it forward. This is Chris Villa. Villa has it taken away, and Jennings sends it forward, and we're seeing a lot of just Allen East getting possession and sending it away. Not much possession for the Mustangs as they're just trying to keep it out of that defensive third. So far, the plans work pretty well. You know, at some point, though, you got to think that if you're Allen East, you'd love to be able to get down and have a little bit of a prolonged offensive possession. Now Yoder finds some space on the right side. Chance to cross, he does so, but he puts it behind the goal for a goal kick. I have to imagine Newland will take his time here. Some substitutes here for the Mustangs. Now the field, 15, Cam, Cozart, Cam Cozart and number 20, and number 20 Grady that's Grady Cox. Newland plays it short. Ball played down the right side. See Kenton playing with a lot more urgency than we've seen so far in this game. Alan Iso staying right with him. Yoder drops it back for Bowman. Bowman trying to find some space. He's got two defenders on him. Now gets rid of it. This one played into the box. But again, nice job by Alan East. Cutting down those passes, that time Logan Helzer, who we've seen do some good work so far tonight. Here now goes Jennings, Jennings, one on four, looking for some space. He took he it right to He ends up winning a corner kick out of that, which is not an expected result. No. When you take on four defenders 20 yards from the goal, but I'll tell you what, that's good effort. And again, Allen East can take their time. The ball rolling all the way to the corner, so we're just going to Take a nice slow walk. As Jennings just, he didn't hesitate that time. I think it caught Kenton off guard as Kenton didn't expect him to keep coming at him and coming at him and coming at him. And that caused that corner kick. Alan East with another corner opportunity. Kenton with the substitution. So this is going to help Alan East as they're not going to have to be forced to kick this one right away. So to take the corner will be Garrett Jennings. Jennings to the front post, knotted out by Kenton. Looks like he may get himself another corner out of that one. I think it went on the backside of the flag and it did. Jennings will try again. This time to the back post, this time over everyone's head and out for a Kenton throw. But again, the further that ball goes, the more time they'll run off the clock. And we're going to stop it here. We got a 
put it at 9.05. So we were supposed to have a stoppage earlier, it looks like. So a little bit of time added on. Fortunate for Kenton. Not sure when the stoppage would have occurred. You can see Allen East. They're just dropping guys back right now, quote unquote. They're ready to park the bus if they need to and try to ride the last nine minutes of this time off. I've been really impressed with their defense and especially their goalkeeper back there, Zane Newland. But the defensive backs have done such a great job cutting out those passes, not allowing any open looks from inside the box. We might have seen one or two good looks, but both of which went straight to Newland, and so Allen East, as the scoreboard indicates, has done a really nice job defensively. Ball sent forward, knocked down. And knotted out of bounds. The longer Allen East spends in their offensive side of the field, the happier they will be, I'm sure. Absolutely, no no sense of urgency here. Take as much time as they're allowed. Now on the right side, Kenton forced to just knock it out. That's Cam Jesianowski. Be a throw for the Mustangs as they take their time. Send up the right. Another one knocked back, but Alani still in possession. Both teams trying to control. Now finally Yoder with it in with some space. Knocked forward. Here's Kaufman. Taken away once again by Moeller, but now Kaufman with it. And he will just send it back toward Newland, who will certainly take his time here and force Chris Villa to come up. Under seven to go now. Kenton really on their heels as Alan East is looking to be what essentially would be a really big upset if they can hold on and get this W. No question. That's exactly how you want to start your season, especially after just winning two games the prior year. If you can win your first and go 1-0, and oh, that's got to feel really good, but still some work to do. Six and a half to play. And they can't let up. This defense has to continue to stand tall as it has all night long. Love to maybe get a couple of more offensive possessions as well to eat some time. Kenton down the right side, still the last five to 10 minutes, haven't had much clean possession in their final third. As Alanis has done a great job knocking it away. Now this one sent forward by Colson Harper who comes way off the line. Which he had to, fortunately he was already playing up because if he'd been back any farther, Alanis would have had another great run. Ball out of play. Want to remind you that TV44 and WOSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just go to WTLW.com. Another long throw in coming up for Yoder. And another nice job by the defense. That time it's Emilio Reddig with the header, knocking it out of the box. But now a corner coming up. Actually, I think they call for a throw. And yeah, be a it throw is from the corner. Be, it is going to be a throw. So Alanis will readjust here. Yoder lining up a long throw once again. This one knocked away once again. Emilio Reddick doing a nice job in the center of that defense. This one down the line. Here's Kaufman. 
Ball up in the air. Reddick knocks it down. Still some danger as it's at the edge of the box. Kaufman. And a player goes down. Kenton pleading for a foul, but they don't get it. Play continues, but that one's cut out. And a nice job there, just clearing it forward. And that's going to benefit the Mustangs as it goes out of play off of Colson Harper. Under four minutes to play. Mustangs trying to hold on. Clock will stop again. I have a substitution. So just a one goal difference here. The clock will stop on substitutions. And Under five minutes to play. If the winning team makes, or the, the team that's ahead makes a substitution, the clock will stop. I forgot, so I'm glad that you were here for that. <laughs> every now and then I'm helpful, Evan, every now and then. You're always helpful, Nate. Always a pleasure working with you, my friend. Jennings takes a hard fall, but he pops right up as Alan East is starting to feel it. He comes up, you see Jennings fired up. It was Carlos Herrera. The offender, ball on the right side. Pass cut out, that's Bowman. Popped up in the air, taken back by Allen East. Now sent into the box. Kenton just can't get the ball out of that defensive third right now. Not good for a team that has three minutes to tie it up. Now the spacing from Allen East right now is really good. They're putting themselves in good position to be able to challenge all of these balls and try to keep it on their side of the field as we are under three to go. That's Mitchell Hawk. Kenton right now selling out. Saw a player go diving, trying to get the header. They know they need possessions here. Now the ball played down the left side. Here's Jennings. Jennings cuts in, now takes the shot, and he curls it wide. Good opportunity there, though. And it looks like Alan East was trying to put up the argument that it got deflected off of a Kenton player. But the officials are saying, no, it's going to be a goal kick. Jennings had to knock that one down a little bit, try to control it, and as he had the defender on his back, he just couldn't quite get a clean look as he turned around. Well, it's a free kick. I'm not sure what the call was to warrant the free kick. They called a handball. Good catch up here by a woman that I know as Zane Newland's mother. Jen. Jen. Thank you, Jen. Kenton knocks this one out of play. So again, they cannot get the ball into that final third. It's got to be frustrating for the Wildcats as they're under 90 seconds to play. This one just sent in behind the defense and it will roll out for a goal kick as they try to get it to Colson Harper as quickly as they can. Now this one played down the right side. Jennings brings it down off his chest. And once again, the ball kicked out of play. And Allen East looking for a ball to throw back in. Forty-four seconds. Down the left side, behind the defense. Jennings trying to get there, not able to do so. And it is a goal kick, MJ Colson. Harper, actually, they're going to give it to Hunter Taylor. 30 seconds. Taylor's got to put it into play, and he does. Yoder gets to it. Yoder passes to Bowman. And that one knocked out of play by Allen East. Down the left side now. Six seconds left. and. All the balls are kicked very far away. They can't get the ball back into play. And that will do it for opening night of soccer here on WOSN. Allen East with their first win of the season. They are 1-0 oh after winning just two games last year. 
halfway to that win total after just one. Yeah, a tremendous effort tonight from both teams, but Allen East, where we felt in that first half that they spent most of the time playing defense. And even when you look at the second half as a whole, they didn't get a lot of opportunities on the offensive side of things. But a great pass from Garrett Jennings to Schaefer on the run out. Schaefer using that incredible speed of his to get behind the defense and get the one goal that Allen East needed. And just a tremendous way to start the season for an Allen East team that isn't necessarily rebuilding, but is trying to get things going under a new uh, staff here. And then a Kenton team, you know, it's going to come away disappointed. They know that they have a lot to replace, you know, but this team is just not used to losing games, especially outside a conference, and you know, this one's going to hurt a little bit. No question. Hey, I want to thank our scoreboard sponsor one more time, Kenton Moose. Check them out at kentonmoose428.com. I want to thank the Allen East Athletic Department, especially Allen King there, Athletic Director, for the hospitality tonight. And as always, want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to High School Soccer on WOSN. For our cameraman, Jacob Hot Dog O'Neill, and for my partner, Nate Garlock, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night, and God bless.